Right now, JP Morgan put out a report saying that today, the cost to create a Bitcoin is roughly $13,000. So I want to help explain exactly what that means and how this will affect us. I'm excited. Let's get right into it. Here's something important to remember. Last month, the countdown started on June 13th, 2022. The S&P 500 went into a bear market where it lost 20% year to date. Now, here's a fun fact. Over the last 65 years, dating back to October 21st, 1957, we've had a grand total of 12 bear markets. Now, over that time, on average, one month after a bear market, the stock market has recovered 2.9%. But that's just one month later. Check this out. Just three months later, the stock market's median has been up 5.7%. Six months later, the stock market was up 5.5%. And one year later, the stock market was up 23.9%. So what the data suggests is that after the stock market drops 20% or more, typically 12 months later, of which so far we've seen a month of, the stock market tends to recover. But that's also not always been the case. For example, in 1973, we had the stock market still down 26.9%, 12 months after a bear market. In fact, it didn't even recover to the pre-crash levels until six years later. But that's also because the 70s was crazy. We had an unwinnable war that we were facing, an oil embargo on the US, we had the Nixon Watergate scandal, and we had a currency crisis, which was the end of the Bretton Woods Agreement, where we got off the gold standard, which started to devalue the dollar. It was crazy times. The second time when the market did not recover 12 months after a bear market was March 12, 2001, where the market was down 1.2%, mostly thanks to inflated tech stocks and earnings being just not very good. The third time the stock market did not recover a year after that 20% drop was 2008, during the global financial crisis and the collapse of real estate, when the market took 17 months to recover. So what that tells me is that the market typically does recover a year after that bear market, provided that the thing doing the crashing is not a global event of uncertainty or the collapse of a whole currency. But now let me share with you the link between the strength of the dollar and how well investors do. I just found this data recently. I've been excited about it. I've been nerding out about it. So let me show it to you. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. Let me show you what inflation just did to our savings. This right here is $100,000 of totally not fake money in our accounts. Good job us for working hard. But this right here is 9.1%, almost $9,000 that's going to be gone thanks to inflation. This right here is a sizable down payment on a used car and maybe a vacation, all gone thanks to inflation. The market is having a really hard time right now. Check this out. Look how hard it is to get 12% returns in today's market. Experts are saying that portfolios will literally flatline this year and that's if we're lucky. So if our money's not any good in a bank account and if it's potentially not good in an investment account, what can we do? In situations like these, we can take cues from the world's best investors because a groundbreaking Ernst & Young study done last year revealed eight in 10 ultra high net worth individuals already invest in alternatives. Things like real estate, gold, private equity and fine art. Roughly two thirds of millionaires are already using fine art to hedge against inflation. According to UBS, the last time inflation was this high, art appreciated by an unprecedented 33.2% annually. No wonder Bloomberg tried to warn investors earlier this year that art can serve as an inflation hedge in almost any environment. But the problem is that people like you and I probably don't have millions of dollars laying around to buy Banksy's and Basquiat's. So instead, I think I found the solution, Masterworks. They're helping people keep their cash intact by offering fractional investments in in the top 1% of the art world. And best of all, they've delivered an unbelievable 25% net returns for the last four years in a row through COVID, through a bear market and high inflation. And that all kind of looks like this. Now I have to legally add that past performance is not a guarantee of future results, but it's no wonder that people have invested over $500 million with them. And last week, after they sold a painting with a net return of 27%, they saw their signups increase by 682%. That combined with the fact that they speak to every investor to make sure that art is right for them means that there's a wait list. So believe it or not, the stock market and the dollar can actually correlate. Now, you might have heard of something called Forex trading. This is where investors essentially speculate and invest their money betting on what will happen to other money. And the benchmark of all this money is the dollar, which is the world reserve currency. And it's measured by something called the DXY index, sometimes called the Dixie index. Now, the DXY index is measured against six other currencies around the world in what are called trading pairs. Now, there are six trading pairs and they are the euro, 
the Japanese yen, the British pound, the Canadian dollar, the Swedish krona, and the Swiss franc. All of them have different percentage points because it depends on their weight of importance relative to the index. So as these currencies go down in value, the value of the dollar, or the DXY, goes up. So you can think of these currencies as our competitors, and that's because you can think of the world as an investor. And as an investor, the world can put its money anywhere it wants, depending on who's offering the highest interest rates and whose economy is growing the fastest and who looks the safest. That's why the DXY index today is roughly at 107.98. The last time it was this high was 2002, and that's now mostly thanks to our central bank man, Mr. Papa Powell, who said to the world, hey world, come give us your money. We're gonna pay you a high interest rate, our economy is strong, we have the world reserve currency, and we've got football. And then Europe was like, football? You mean football? And the US was like, what? And then Europe was like, well, I guess I don't have much of a choice because we have the conflict with Ukraine, the UK is going through Brexit, everything looks unstable, inflation is everywhere. Gosh, have our money, pay us an interest rate. That's kind of what's going on. So now that you kind of understand exactly how the dollar plays into all of this, let me share with you one of the most interesting pieces of data I was able to find, which compares how well stocks and Bitcoin do in relation to the strength of the US dollar. Special thanks to TradingShot on TradingView.com. I know it looks super complicated, but I promise I'll break it down and explain it to you like you were five. This is gonna blow your mind. All right, before I show this to you, please understand that this is not trying to predict the future using Fibonacci sequences and magical tea leaves, it'd be way too complicated for me. Instead, all it's doing is it's looking at Bitcoin's price, the stock market's price, and the strength of the US dollar over the last 10 years. That's it. So here it is. The blue line right here represents the stock market's S&P 500. The green line represents the dollar's DXY index, or the strength of the dollar. And the orange line represents Bitcoin. Now this chart is mostly focusing on explaining Bitcoin's price movement, but please don't think of it only in terms of Bitcoin. This also applies to stocks because they're kind of like cousins. They're what's called highly correlated assets because they're both risk assets. So whatever's happening in the stock market, Bitcoin is usually following and vice versa. Okay, let's get back to the chart. It's broken down into three different sections. The rise phases in green, the fall phases in red, and the accumulation phases in yellow. By the way, the accumulation phase is just fancy for people buying and holding and the price not doing anything other than just moving sideways. Here is where it gets interesting. Let's compare all the same colors to each other, starting with the greens when Bitcoin is up, and pay a special close attention to the dollar's influence. Here you can see, as the dollar is down, the stock market is up and Bitcoin is up. In the next section, the dollar is sideways. The stock market is still up and Bitcoin is still up. In the next section, same exact thing. Dollar sideways, market up, Bitcoin up. And the next section, as the dollar falls, the market goes up and Bitcoin goes up. So far, what the data suggests is that when the dollar is sideways, both the stock market and Bitcoin are like, this is pretty good, I like this. But when the dollar goes down, both of them are like, yes, we love this. They love it when the dollar goes down. So now let's compare the red sections to each other. This is when Bitcoin is going down and pay a special close attention again to the dollar's influence. So the first red section, when the dollar was up, the stock market went down and Bitcoin went down. Next section, when the dollar went up, the stock market did nothing and Bitcoin went down. Next section, same thing again. The dollar went up, the market did nothing and Bitcoin went down. Once again, the market does not like a strong dollar. At best, the stock market will move sideways as the dollar goes up. Now let's take a look at the last color, which is yellow. This is the tiebreaker where Bitcoin does nothing. It just moves sideways. So again, pay attention to the dollar's influence. First yellow section, dollar is sideways and the stock market goes up, Bitcoin does nothing. Second yellow section, the dollar is sideways, the stock market goes down, and Bitcoin does nothing. Third section, dollar is sideways, market is up, Bitcoin does nothing. Fourth section, dollar goes up and the stock market is up, surprisingly, but Bitcoin still does nothing. Okay, I know that was a lot, so based on all this information, let me break it down and explain exactly what I learned and how you can apply it. There's only one rule I can apply from all of this, and that is, when the dollar was up, there has never been a time when Bitcoin was also up. That's true for stocks, at least in the last 10 years as well. When the dollar was up, there was never a time when stocks were also up other than one time, which was in 2021, when the government flooded the economy with stimulus. So 
arguably, if we didn't have all that free money, the stock market maybe would have never been up at all. Now, if you're still confused, here's a super easy way to memorize all of that. Think the dollar like gravity. It has a huge influence on what happens to asset prices. So when we have a strong dollar, it's like having strong gravity and everything wants to stay on Earth. When we have a weak dollar, it's like having no gravity and everything wants to float up and go up in value. And the reason it works this way is because interest rates are kind of like the Higgs boson particle to gravity because what makes a strong dollar is a strong interest rate or a higher federal funds rate, kind of like what makes strong gravity is a Higgs boson particle with more mass. Nothing like using complex theoretical physics to explain the nuances of an already complicated economy. That was for you for the three nerds still watching. Now here's really the most interesting part right here. Because if we take this chart and finish it out knowing what we know now, it all still works. You can see that the dollar is now stronger, up to 108, putting us exactly right here which tells us the stock market should either be flat or also down. Right now, the stock market has come down to exactly this point, which tells us because the dollar is up and because the stock market is down, chances are Bitcoin will also be down. And sure enough, Bitcoin has come down to exactly this point. Just remember, all of this stuff works until it doesn't. But thankfully, right now, everything around the world is happening to everybody all at once. So it kind of cancels out and all these pieces have landed kind of perfectly into place, which is why the focus now is mostly on inflation, interest rates, and of course the world reserve currency, the dollar, which thankfully we control. Love you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes Wednesday. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.